Hey guys, welcome to another Monday with DecoArt. We are here with part three, and I think what's going to be the final part of the Van Gogh, inspired by Van Gogh canvas that we've started on our canvas that was painted black. Because I originally did it evidently in 2011. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue working on our painting. Um, this first coat has been dry for a couple of days. I've got a small smallish filbert brush here. This is a number eight filbert by Simply Simmons. I've got my inspiration photos here off to the side. I've got, and I've got my deco art traditions paint right here. So <clears throat> I'm going to now refine my painting. This layer is just all about refining my mark make, making and firming up the shapes and colors and making sure I have the right things in the right places. The first thing I'm going to do is set up my palette <clears throat> with all of my different colors. I'm going to start with the blues. Y'all know I like blue, so I've got a lot of blue. So I've got aquamarine, ultramarine blue, Thalo blue and Prussian blue. There'll be a list in the description below. I've got some Peroni orange. Uh, that's that name I still don't know how to pronounce. Anyway, it's orange. I'll put the name in the description below. I have no idea how to say it. I've got medium red rose. one that has the cap on it. Let's see. All right. I've got a loser in crimson. I'm not putting a lot out because I don't think we need a lot out. I have sap green. And again, you don't have to take notes. The list of these should be in the description below. Blue green light. yellow green light yellow oxide yellow deep it's like a yellow ochre color <clears throat> hands of yellow And then in the center where I'm going to put my neutrals, I have raw umber, and I have burnt umber, two different shades of brown, one more grayer and one more red. I have black and white. The white on is the one I'm going to put the most out on because I think that for this painting we need that. All right, so now I'm going to <clears throat> compare what I've painted here with my inspiration photo, and I'm going to start refining and touching up um, my colors and firming up, you know, any marks. blending in some cases like right here blending my paint right on the canvas and you know I have baby wipes they're close by and you're gonna come you're gonna work on this and you're gonna come to a point where you're gonna do something like I just did and put that on there and I'm looking at that thinking hmm, I don't like that the backgrounds dry so look it just comes right off I wasn't so crazy about that. All right, so let's try that again. <laughs> okay, everybody, as I was saying, as you're working on this second layer of paint, if you end up doing something to your painting that you don't like, make sure you have those baby wipes handy and you can just wipe it back, uh, wipe it off. 
um, smudge it a bit, um, change it around, um, do what you need to. The second layer is all about refining your marks and adjusting your colors if needed and firming up the shapes in your painting. Um, at the same time, don't be too precious about some of your prior marks like those lines that I had there in the upper right. You can always bring them back later um, if it means that I'm going to get a better series of marks in the background than what I had, then I'm okay with that. Um, and it turns out with the finished painting that that's exactly what happened. I really liked that. Um, you can see I'm blending some of the paint and the marks with my baby wipe. Wiping some back, moving it around. It's not all about making my marks with the brush. You know, don't be afraid to use a baby wipe. Use your fingers. Use a coffee stirrer. Use a, uh, a stick, a knitting needle, um, a, a little brush. I've used all of those things in my paintings to make marks in the paint on the canvas. Whatever works for you to get the marks that you want, um, that you're inspired to make by your inspiration photo that you're using. And I like here where I decided that, you know, dawned on me, you know, maybe I should add some of that white into the sky, but, you know, I don't know, maybe use kind of a dry brush instead of one that's just completely loaded with white. That turned out much better. And I always focus on my backgrounds first instead of starting off with right away um, working with the focal points or the foreground because that way if I get the background right then I can do whatever I need to with the other images on the painting and I don't have to worry about going back later and touching up the background. Now here with the tree and, and all the suggestions of foliage I'm just layering colors and marks you know on top of each other. I'm, I'm using the same brush I'm just I'm using a dabbing motion there, there I put the lines back and they're in a slightly different spot but I'm okay with that because I actually like where they ended up better than the first time. I decided to do a voiceover on this and speed the video up a bit otherwise it was a very long video um, over an hour and with lots of dead time because I kind of forgot the camera was on it uh, at a few points and uh, stopped talking because I was too busy into the painting and bringing the painting to life the way I wanted it to be. I am using the inspiration photo for reference for colors where the colors were in the original. I'm not sticking to it completely, but I'm using it for a suggestion of where they should be and where the light's coming from. And overall, I love the way the painting turned out. It's in my dining room. I've got to make room for it, I think, and hang it on the wall in there. I used a lot of sap green um, in the painting and uh, a couple of the blues and uh, white, of course. This is that um, uh, one. Well, that's one of the greens, but then uh, I've also I also use a lot of the Deco Art Aquamarine Traditions Artist Acrylic and Aquamarine in this painting. It's turning out to be one of my favorite colors of their paint in that line. I, yes, you saw me add some blue to the trees and the foliage because I'm realizing in the inspiration photo as I'm refining my colors and my marks and my shapes that there's some blue showing through the trees and the leaves and the bushes. Some probably what was originally in the original photo, probably blue sky but um, or reflections. But I'm just moving around, refining my shapes, refining my colors. That little tree right there what, that I was just painting gives me fits. <laughs> right up until the end I have trouble with that little tree. You see me continually going back to it. And this is the color that in the original video footage before I took the sound out I kept calling it yellow ochre. It's not yellow ochre. Um, it's yellow deep or it reminds me of um, Nicolazzo gold but it's called yellow deep and the other one is I don't remember what the other one is but those are I love those two colors. It's in the description below. Now I'm working on the church, refining the shapes and the um, suggestion of windows and different um, suggestions of architecture in the in the in the church. I've switched to a small round brush from the small filbert brush, and I'm not really cleaning my brush too much. I do have a rag that's slightly off camera that I'm. Um, continually wiping the brush off on and or rinsing it and wiping it off on and that's 
that's helping me, but I'm not really being super clean about the brush. I don't mind the colors mixing on the painting or mixing on the brush. It just adds, in my mind, more interest to the painting. I have troubles with that little doorway. I, kept, I keep playing with a little doorway right up until the end. But overall, I really like the way this uh, painting turned out. I really, it turned out really great. See right there, I keep playing with that just right up until the end. It wasn't quite right. Then when it finally does come out right, um, it was like, ah, yay, I got it. So I want you guys to just keep playing and trying. You can start out, of course, with something much simpler and um, uh, less busy, less complicated. Um, but the point is, don't be afraid to try. And maybe you do your painting, and it takes a lot more than just two layers of paint uh, to get the, it to look the way you want. That's totally OK. I've done paintings where I have six or more layers on them before I get it to the point where I'm happy with it and I'm OK with stopping. And the, the nice thing about doing this kind of painting is that you know, this is inspired by an inspiration photo that's completely wonky, completely unrealistic, with the suggestions of different shapes, but, you know, there's no straight lines. There's absolutely no realism in this painting. Um, there's a suggestion of the environment without any realism, and that takes off a lot of pressure. You're not, you know, painting an exact, you know, perfect realistic landscape or cityscape or churchscape in this case. So, you know, I want you to experiment with that and be free about it and just give it a try. The program I used to originally alter the photograph and most of the photographs on my website is called Auto Painter HD. Um, they do have a PC or desktop version called Dynamic Auto Painter, um, although I do believe it's a little bit different than the app. And I have the app on both my smartphone and my iPad. Um, so wherever I'm at, I take photos. Um, what, you know, if I'm in the car or whatever, I can sit and alter some of my photos and then save them. I do wish they had a version of altering in the app that was one for Picasso, because that would be totally cool. Right there, I'm realizing there's a problem at the bottom of that tree. At some point, I put some more white underneath that tree, because I realized that blue spot underneath this tree is not quite right and that there should it should be more white because the church actually goes back behind the tree. <clears throat> so you see me put some white in there towards the end. And there I'm giving a suggestion of tree trunks. I want you guys to just really give it a try and be brave. If you screw it up, that's what they make Jessa for. And you can just gesso over it and try again. But I encourage you not to do that and to <clears throat> just keep adding more, adding more layers of paint and marks in it and just refining your shapes and your um, positioning of your marks until you get something that you really like. Right there you see me adding some white highlights in that I'm noticing are in the inspiration photo. Just a, a real big pop. You, of course, could use, instead of white, you could use lemon yellow or something bright that suggests sunlight. I wanted to pull in some white from the building of the church into a couple other places on the painting so that that <clears throat> color is in a few other places. Now I'm just adding some brush stroke marks to the church um, similar to what I see in the inspiration photo. I'm not blending them. I'm you know leaving them in straight marks and horizontal lines because it gives it interest in the suggestion of architecture without actually painting the exact realistic you know building and I just I love that it's just great and I'm just I'm just using the white there's other colors on there they're wet they're blending a little bit with the white and creating a new color and I'm okay with that the blue which is uh, my shadow color is showing through the white I'm okay with that now I've decided to work on the area in front of the church which actually was a street with some bushes because remember when I said when I took this picture I literally had my phone hanging out the car window. And it is St. Michael's Catholic Church in Livermore, California, in case I forgot to say, because I don't remember. 
that little spot gives me fits. I keep going back to it. Yep, yeah, see, wiping it, blending it, adding colors to it. I get it. I get it where I'm happy with it at the end, but yeah, it's all paintings have ugly duckling stages or points where you're not exactly sure that all of it or part of it is headed in the right direction. Don't be afraid to just, you know, the beauty of acrylic paint is you just can keep painting over it, you know, let it dry, paint over it some more and add more marks to it. The more you do that, the more interesting it gets. So be brave and just give it a shot. And there you see how I smudged that right hand spot there a little bit. I love the way that looked. I decided to leave it, at least for the moment. You know, I make things a little bit too light, and so then I bring in some dark, and instead of putting in black, I use some of my darkest blue there. And then wiped it back a bit with the baby wipe, and that gave me a really good effect. I don't know what this was in the original photo down at the bottom. I think it must have been bushes or grass or something. But when I put it through the app, it created these swirls of color, green and yellow and white. So I decided to replicate that in the painting because I thought that was interesting. And again, I'm bringing in the pops of white. Which give the uh, photo some life and they gave the original photo that I altered some life also. Now I'm just double checking it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, my um, contact information is in the description below. So don't be afraid to use it. And um, you can comment on the video. I do respond usually within a day or two uh, to all my comments um, and questions. And uh, if you want to send me some happy mail or if you've got a product you want me to try and to review, you can. Um, send it to me at my P.O. box, which is also in the description below. You see me here adding some lem of the lemony yellow to just, it just helps you indicate sunlight and warmth. Yeah, um, it just, it really helps you suggest sunlight. I'm adding it to um, all areas of the canvas where I think the sun would be shining. And in some cases I'm blending it a bit, in some cases I'm not. And right there where I'm pointing, that's the blue spot that I think needs to be white. And I keep looking at it and thinking, hmm, yeah, that's not quite right. But as soon as I carefully put some white in there, and I don't cover up all of the blue, I cover up some of it and I wipe it back. And that's perfect. And that really solved the problem I had with this painting. I knew there was a problem right there. I just wasn't sure what it was right away. I lost my little red spot. And then I bring in some more of that red into other parts of the painting, like I did with the white. At some point you need to put the photo aside and you need to um, work on what's right for the painting and not stop trying to match the photo. Um, and that helps bring your painting to life and adding this red to my painting was one of those instances. I hope you guys like this painting tutorial, and if you do, please let me know, and uh, we'll see if we can do some more of them. Right there, that little tree just gives me fits. I kept playing with the little tree. It was another like problem spot for me. I think I should have left it well enough alone. I do get it to where I'm okay with it at the end, but it was kind of an issue. <laughs> Stupid little tree. So if you're interested in any of these products that we've used on this painting, please go to decoart.com. Their uh, website is in the description below, and um, you can look there where to buy, or they do have an online store. I really like their gesso. It's thicker, like um, more like a gel um, than the gessos I usually use, and I really like that about it, and it covered actually really well, especially the black. Um, so um, that would be one thing I'd suggest maybe you want to give you want to try.
but I do like their Traditions paint also. I'm enjoying that and their Media Fluid Acrylics. So that's it right now. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later.